Welcome and welcome back everybody, it's Tia here and in today's video we'll be playing through Pierce of Elster's Village Green published by Osprey Games. The game does play between two to five players normally, however there's a solo variant included which we'll be taking a look at today. During the playthrough I'll give a tutorial on how to play Village Green solo and be sure you stick around for the end of the video where I'll share some of my thoughts about the game and specifically the solo mode. So here we have a game of Village Green set up and ready to play. The solo setup will be identical to the multiplayer setup. We'll start by drawing three green cards to form our hand and three purple cards to place on our top row of our garden. We'll also choose one of the village cards and place that to the left of the three purple awards cards. You are then going to make a deck of the purple awards cards revealing the top three and the green cards showing again the top Three. Throughout the game, you'll be taking similar actions to the multiplayer game, which are either draw and play a green card or draw and play a purple awards card. In doing so, we are going to create a grid of cards here that is four by four. The awards cards will be placed along the left end edge and the green cards will be placed in a three by three grid in the center to try to score different objectives. So our goal is to create the most beautiful garden based on these purple awards cards. We can see here that we're looking for tasteful displays of lilies and I believe they're hibiscus flowers without any empty lawns, open spaces, or roses. We're also looking in this center column to create red lilies specifically, which will award us three points each. And here we're looking for birch trees, but no willow trees. As we continue on, we will place awards cards to the left again, up to three, that will score the different rows of cards that we place as well. So let's go ahead and start by jumping into our first turn. I'm going to go ahead and do the take a green card action. So I think because of the three that are out here right now, not really matching with the cards I have in my hand, nor any of the scoring objectives very well, I'm gonna to choose to, instead of taking one from here, take one off the top and add it to my hand. After doing that action, I have to play one of these cards to this garden section. I do see that I have two birch trees, which would be worth two points each if I put them in my award for outstanding birch plantation column. So we'll go ahead and place that there, though I could have placed any of the other cards that were previously in my hand as well. Now in the solo game, in order for you to take this action, you must be able to place a green card, whereas in the multiplayer game, you can simply pass after drawing and discard one card to the bottom of the deck. Next up, I think we're going to go ahead and look at potentially best color combination because we can score a lot of points for purple card, uh, purple flowers, which we do have here. So that could intersect pretty nicely. I'm going to go ahead and draw this one. Again, I could instead draw from the top and I will place it up on this top row here. Now in a multiplayer game, you can freely cover up previously placed awards cards. However, in the solo game, the only way you'll be able to do that is if you use one of these gazebo structures, which automatically give you a bonus of drawing and playing a purple card. Okay, moving on to our next action. I believe we're going to take another green card and we have to have some limitations here. So, you have birch trees and things like that. Again, none of these cards look particularly attractive right now. So I'm going to draw one off the top of the deck. See what we come up with. Ooh, and it's another purple card. And it is a lake card, which will be worth two points at the end of the game. Now, when placing cards, since we do have one in our grid, it's important to keep in mind that you can only place cards adjacent to it, meaning in an orthogonal spot, if they have a matching color or potentially a matching flower type. So I could play this, this red rose here because I have a purple rose or I can place any type of purple flower next to it. And we are trying to go for purple up here. So let's see what we could put down. This one we want lilies. That will get us the most points. So I think we'll place this here like so. And eventually we can fill in with another purple card potentially. Maybe this lake card that gets us two points. Unfortunately, it won't do us much good with that lily card. Right, these do give us points for having um, 
our gazebos placed, which we don't have, oh, we do have one here, so that might allow us to cover this up and place one of these gazebo cards. So we'll take the play a green card action. Again, I'm gonna draw off the top for now. We'll place this purple card here. That means if things stay the way that they are, we'll be able to get two points for each of these cards for our color combination well as two points for this card here and four points for this card here. Because we took the gazebo action, as I mentioned previously, we get a free placement of a purple card. And again, in the solo game, this is the only way that we'll be able to place over previously drawn awards cards. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I think this one is a little less risky because it has less negative points and potentially about the same payoff. If we were able to get all three, this one would score us two more points, but I'm not super confident on that. So we'll take excellence in structures and place it here for our awards card. Okay. So moving on. Ooh, we have consistency of features where we want to get three of a type where every three of a symbol will score us points. Let's see. Do we have any birch trees? I have one here that I could place since they're both purple. And that could potentially score us quite a few points. I also have our lake card and another gazebo, though I can't place it quite yet. We'll do the place a green card action. Take one off the top. Ooh, another gazebo. Ooh, which I could place here, although that does limit me in terms of what else I can place in the future. And I'm not sure about whether or not we'll want to place any of these other cards. We could go for three gazebos going across, but I don't think that that will be likely. Or I could get two points for having this one gazebo here. So that might be our best bet for right now. I do have another gazebo that I could play if I wanted to cover it up. We'll do that. So as our bonus action. All right, now we do have an excellence in lawns. We haven't seen a lawn card yet, but these are interesting because they don't have any color or shape for the flower, meaning you can place them adjacent to any card. And in previous turns, if you do draw a card that fits the placement rules, then you can place it on top of the lawn, which is pretty, it's a pretty interesting mechanic. It kind of acts as a placeholder if you don't have quite what you want during that turn. However, during this turn, we do have this card here, which we could place to get two points for our lake, or this one, which has our birch tree for this row and potentially can place this one down here. I think this one gets us two points, whereas this lake gets us two points anywhere. So we'll place this here. Oh, and I forgot we're supposed to technically draw a card first. So we'll do that or say we did it. Ooh, there are some really great cards here. Okay. So I could place either this or this here. I can also get two points for placing red lilies in this row. So I might do that, although I don't want to place the gazebo because two gazebos would be negative two points. So we could cover it with something else potentially, but I think instead we'll go with this lake card here. And in order to do that, we're going to draw a card first. Let's see if there's anything else that helps us. We could get points for three willow trees, which we could easily get with these cards, provided that they match up. I'm not planning on having any roses in this row, however, and we only have one red card. I have no yellows, so that might be a little risky. I think we'll draw off the top again. This is a very <laughs> exciting draw off the top game. Ooh, and we have some oak trees, which could get us three points each. We take the award for outstanding oak plantation. Sweet. All right. Now for the solo game, again, as I said, it'll end anytime you can't take an action or don't want to. So it's completely possible that you have an unfinished grid of cards. You could stop even right here if you didn't think you could score any more points or if future placements would hurt you. We're gonna continue on though, because I think there are more points to be had. So as I said before, we're gonna place this like uh, little pond here to get two points for the red lily. And we'll also get two points for our pond and maintain that this row will have two points. Okay, and next up, there was a plan essentially to place this here and score another um, man-made structure. However, we could then take this and 
do have a yellow lily and a yellow rose, but I can't necessarily place them here because of the limitations with these shapes and types of cards. I do have a purple rose, which I could place here, but then I would need to have a red rose to go here, which there is a willow card that has that, but it doesn't necessarily give us any more points. So potentially we'll draw one off the top and see what we can do. Okay, so we have a yellow lily that has a gazebo on it. I'm going to stick with the original plan though and take this card and place it here. Okay, and let's go ahead and draw up another card. I suppose I could also, nope, I can't put that in the middle because it doesn't match the flower type here or color. Draw another one. We have a yellow rose with birch trees. That would have been nice in this column, but it wouldn't quite fit. We'll place our red lily here with the pagoda and place our award card here. And flip over our next card. Three types of flowers will be worth six points. We don't have really any opportunities for that, unfortunately. So now we are at a little bit of a crossroads here. We have our hand of cards none of which can be played to this spot. The only visible card would be this red rose because we have two red cards and a rose. And in fact, that's the only symbol that we could play to this spot. We'll only get points for it if it has oak trees and or gazebos. Our other option that we can do as a kind of last stitch effort or at any point throughout the game if we're not really liking what we're seeing, which this probably would have been a smart move earlier in the game, so we do have our village card, which is worth one point. However, you can forfeit taking that point and flip the card over, which will allow you to do one of two things. You will be able to refresh either the green or the purple cards by putting them to the bottom and drawing three new cards, or you can use it to place a card over top of another garden card, even if it's not a lawn, provided that the icons do match with any adjacent cards. In this case, I'm thinking it's a long shot that we would get a red rose card that happens to have either oak trees or a gazebo. In either case, we would get two or three more points. So I think we'll stick with the one point instead and see how that goes. Now moving on to scoring, we'll start with our village card, which is one point since we have not utilized it. We get two points for each lily, which brings us to seven points. We have two points for our two gazebos total, so that brings us to nine points, plus six points for our birch trees, no negatives for willow trees, 15. We have two points for each of our purple flowers, which brings us to 21. We have another gazebo, which will give us two points, 23, and three points for each of our oak trees, which brings us to 29 points, plus two points for our pond for a total of 31 points. So looking up in our solo scoring table here, that puts us firmly in the runner up position. So we were, we would have to score more than 35 in order to be village green of the year, which we were close, but not quite. As I said, had I used this card earlier so that we weren't having random draws all the time, we may have had better luck, although I think that this is a pretty stunning setup of a garden, if I do say so myself. So there you have it. That is how you play the solo mode for Village Green. I'll start by saying that the overall production quality and aesthetic of this game is really top notch. The illustrative watercolor art provided by Joanna Rosa is really well done and fits the theme of the game and really enhances the overall vibe. Now getting on to the gameplay, this is one that was actually gifted to me by my partner Duke and I am so glad that he did. I originally saw it read the description, thought, okay, you're taking cards and placing them into a grid in order to make a garden, Arboretum. And that is one of my favorite smaller card games, and I thought, they're probably too similar, I don't need both. However, upon receiving and playing this, I can definitely say that they have very different feels throughout the course of the game, even though they have a similar turn progression. In Village Green, it tends to be a little bit more calming, you have a lot more knowledge 
about what you'll be able to score because there's no hidden information about cards and being able to have majorities in order to score at the end of the game. I think that Tension Arboretum is fantastic, but I'm not always personally up for the stress that that may induce. Though I appreciate the design of both and think they're both great, this is one that I'm more inclined to get to the table more often for that reason. For the solo mode, I really like the idea that you are limited to only the six award cards and you kind of just have to work with it. This is, again, due to the fact that other people are not drafting the garden or awards cards that you might want, so you have a lot more foresight and planning. It feels very puzzly, but very interesting as well, and I think limiting the awards cards really adds to that tension and helps to keep the timer mechanism of the game on point. So I think this one is really excellent small footprint card game if you're looking for something with a lot of replayability, high quality, at a very affordable price point, I would definitely recommend checking out Village Green. That's all the time we have for today. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please feel free to leave a like. You can also subscribe down below for more board game content. Thank you again so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye!